Hello everyone, I'm Emma Watson. I'm delighted to be welcoming you all to the opening of the Into Film Festival. Uh, it's an honour to be joined by Malala Yousafzai. Hello, Malala. Hello. <laughs> First, I just wanted to say how wonderful I thought the film was and that you're just my absolute hero, so this is... Thank you so much. This is, um... It's a great honour to see you as well. Oh, so <laughs> that's really kind. Thank you. I think the, the best part of the film for me was that you got to see what obviously made you so extraordinary, but uh, more importantly, ordinary, which shows that anyone can encourage change. And I just thought that was a wonderful message from the film. Do you have a sense uh, of a tangible goal that you would like the Malala Fund to reach within your lifetime? So uh, it's my simple dream and very straightforward. I want to see every child to get quality education. And in order to make sure that that dream comes true, we have to work hard and we have to take action. And that's why through the Malala Fund, we are working each and every day. And now the sustainable development goals are going to be set up. So we are raising our voice saying that not just primary education should be focused on, but both primary and secondary education should be available to every child. And this has been my mission and I'll make it come true. I'll try my best. <laughs> How does it feel to have your story shown on film and screened to thousands of young people today as part of the Into Film Festival? Uh, it's quite interesting, but I don't like seeing myself on TV or I, I can't even hear my voice. So, um, but once the film was made and I watched it, it really inspired me the way Davis Guggenheim, the director of the film, has delivered our story through animation and spread the message of education across the world. And it was his commitment to this goal that led to this, the making of this movie. And um, it covers, as, as you have seen it, uh, it covers like the family story and how we stood up for the right to education at that hard time of terrorism in Swat Valley. So hopefully the message will spread and it will inspire more people to come together and join the campaign that we are having through the Malala Fund, hashtag with Malala, and um, uh, to, to come together and do something. It's not just that you watch the film, but you do something. And I want this movie not just to be a movie, but a movement. It's, that's amazing. and. I thought that the animation in the film was so beautiful and I loved the mythology behind it and it just really, it, it was so beautifully done and, and so well told and I completely agree with you. I think it's great that people are watching the film and it's wonderful but it's great that you want people to really do something and, and, yes. and take action as well and, and that this is about a movement, not just a film. I think it's amazing that it's, it's going so far beyond that. Um, a part of the film that really touched me was how big of a role you know your father has played in your life and and in the film uh, how would you respond to anyone who said that you know men can't be feminists or shouldn't be campaigning for for girls rights well my father he has set an example to all parents and all male all uh, all men that if we want equality if we want equal rights for women then we have to men have to step forward because if we if we complain that women don't get equality, equal rights, it's mean like all the things are taken by men. So they need to they need to step back and say, We want we are here to support. So it can't happen that men are just thinking it's just a few women's job who are crazy feminists and they're gonna change it and things are going to be change soon, it's not going to happen like this. We all have to work together. That's how change will come. And this is the, the role that my father has taken. He believes in women's rights, he believes in equality, and he calls himself a uh, feminist. But interestingly, this word feminism, it has been a very tricky word. And I had, <laughs> when I heard it the first time, I was, I heard it in, in, a, in like, I heard some negative responses and some positive ones. And I hesitated in saying, am I a feminist or not? And then after hearing your speech, uh, when you said, if not now, when, if not me, who, I decided that there's no way and there's, there's nothing wrong by calling yourself a feminist. So I am a feminist and we all should be feminist because feminism is another word for equality. Wow. I'm so moved to hear that. That's <laughs> absolutely amazing. And I agree with you. It's... Um... It's become this really difficult word, but I think it's it's wonderful when people do embrace it because yes. it, it should be synonymous with equality. People have forgotten its definition. They really, really have. Um, so that's wonderful. Wow. I'm so moved to hear that. Uh, 
Well, it's kind of a similar question, but what would you say to people who argue that religion and educating women are at odds? I thought, again, it was so wonderful in the film to show how important your faith and your spirituality were in giving you strength to do yes. the work that you do. Um, I just thought that was such a wonderful part of the film, but what would you say to people that you know, that use scripture to say that women shouldn't be educated or that argue that educating women is a, is a Western concept or a Western idea? I think people fail to understand religious beliefs, especially when it comes to Islam. They have failed to understand that uh, Islam, the word Islam means peace. So they have failed to understand that the very first word of uh, the Holy Quran was Ikra, which means read. It wasn't that only male should read it and not female. It was, it was about reading, it was about learning and getting knowledge. So in Islam you believe that God has sent you to this earth, you are there to gain knowledge, to learn and to discover more. And this is what, what we are here for. And so people have just misinterpreted the religion. And for me, Islam is a religion of peace, which is for the goodness and uh, of whole humanity. And it's for the brotherhood, kindness patience, love for each other, and I don't know why, like, people just go crazy and kill each other and start terrorism, just live a better life and be kind. Why is it so hard to love each other? That's amazing. And, yes, I completely agree. In terms of brothers, it's different, yeah. because I have two brothers and we are never good to each other. <laughs> we fight. That's a separate case, but... Overall, I, I can relate. I yeah. actually have brothers. There's a lot yeah. of fighting that goes yeah, on. Yeah. It's not very peaceful. Yeah. All <laughs> a lot my of the prayers time. are with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, tough for the parents. I was wondering, are you excited to see Hillary Clinton, um, a woman running for president in the US? Well, I'm, I don't really have any views about Like, I don't really know. I haven't really decided on which political side I am in Me America. Neither. I'm not. I, but yeah. I really want, I really think America needs a woman president. That's what I think. I agree with this. I agree with this. Um, very uh, trivial question compared to some of the others, but I had to ask. Um, that really, really bright pink color that you wear, it's one of my absolute favorite colors. And I see you with it a lot, and I wondered if it was lucky or if it had any sort of special meaning to you. I don't know, this, uh, but I have always liked pink color. And when I was going to the UN speech, uh, I wore pink that day, I don't know why, and so yes, and now the film uh, is all pink is orange too. and pink, so yeah. pink is everywhere. Yeah, yes. must be a thing. I yeah. feel it's nice because I get the impression that you're someone who is generally sort of, um, you know, shy, that is struggling with all of the attention that's being thrust on her, but I thought it was wonderful that you'd chosen this this bright colour which meant that you wanted to be seen and, and uh, you know, and you wanted to spread your message in spite of that and I thought that was wonderful. Thank you. As a big book fan, I have to ask you, um, what was your last favourite book? Was there anything that you read in the last year that you just fell in love with? Right now I'm reading A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khalid Hosseini and it's, it's just beautiful. Everyone should read it. It's a wonderful Everyone. book. I've also yes. read this book. It's, yeah. it's an amazing book. I just can't explain it. It's like the best book. Read it. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious what the thing you found the strangest about England compared to Pakistan was well, or would be. So in our books we studied that there are four seasons. And in Pakistan we had four seasons, but in the UK I just found there was one season and it was always winter. <laughs> that was uh, quite surprising. Then another surprising thing was that in the UK people follow traffic rules. Ah. Yeah, which yes. is quite surprising in yes. our country. Um, maybe in a, in a few cities people are nice, but in the rest of the country no traffic rules at all. Um, so that was quite surprising. And But then more than that, it's the love of people mm. and uh, how they have given so much support and I and I have never felt like being from another country. It's just, I have so many friends here and all the teachers in my school, they have been supporting me mm. and keeping me like a normal girl and that's yeah. what, what's really good. And I love it. Yeah, I'm gonna stay here. Okay, I'm <laughs> glad to hear that. I'm really glad to hear that because um, I know you have to deal with being famous and I was going to ask you what I sometimes get asked, which would be what you would do if you could be anonymous for a day. And, uh, and then it sort of, it stopped me dead in my tracks because I realized exactly what you would do. And it really struck me, you know, what you've sacrificed 
uh, for your ideals and your dream and this movement and it made me really emotional actually and uh, so I just wanted to thank you again for being who you are you. and for being so brave. Um, so other than going home, is there anything that you like the idea of doing if you could be, if you had magical powers and you could be invisible <laughs> for a day, what you would do? Well, um, I haven't gone back to Pakistan for three years since that day and I would love to go back to my country and it's just to achieve the goal I have because sometimes people feel like I've got the Nobel Peace Prize and the book and the film they are released and like there's nothing else that I need but people fail to understand that my goal which is to see every child going to school hasn't been achieved yet and that's what I want to see come true and it's really important that we come together and we support each other. This is about the future of all those 66 million girls who cannot go to school right now. It's, it's about our future. It's going to affect every one of us. If so many children are out of school, they don't get education, and they have, girls especially, they have potential, they can contribute to society. If you are stopping half of the population not to come forward, how can you think of progress and achievements? So it's important that we think it's our responsibility to participate actively in bringing change. It's we who can bring change. 66 million girls is such a huge number. It's such a massive number to think yes. about that, that can't go to school at the moment. So those are my questions. <laughs> I know that um, very sweetly we have questions from members of the audience, which is brilliant. So I'll stop taking up all of the time. Uh, why is it important for girls and boys to be treated equally? And this is from Grace Dane at Mill Primary School in Leicester. I think it's that to treat everyone as a human being and uh, just because your gender is different does not mean that you should be treated differently and you should have certain jobs and you shouldn't have certain things in your life. That's like the very, you challenge the, that very concept uh, of inequality based on your gender. Your gender should not be any it should not create any difficulty in, in the choices that you make. It's a very simple thing, like it's about equality, it's about feminism, it's about saying that we're all human beings, why you, why you separate us just because our gender is different. Absolutely agree. Uh, which of your teachers inspired you the most? And this is from Delano uh, in Manchester. I should say like my father was a teacher and he inspired me. But your parents can be your teachers and it's like the first stage when you start learning. Uh, but also I, I love all my teachers like here in the school in the UK and all my teachers in Pakistan school. I just just love all my teachers. I, I kind of, I'm really scared of teachers as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, so love and fear, yes. <laughs> both together. Yeah. That's good. Um, if you could give us 12, 13 year olds any advice what would it be? And this is from Jake in Northern Ireland. Uh, I think an important thing at, that you should know at this stage, 12, 13 of years of age, is that don't think that you are young and you can't do something. When I was re writing the blog for BBC, I was just 11 years old. When I started speaking out, that was my age, the age which you are it. Mm. So don't think that your age can stop you from going forward. As we talk about gender, as we talk about religion and all these things, age is also one of them. So don't think you're young, so you don't have ideas and your ideas won't work. And sometimes we just think I'm young, so I, I'm not at the stage where I can just make a bigger change and uh, I can explore all the big, big ideas. Age cannot put limit to what you want to do. So come forward and uh, do the things that you want to do. Don't think that one day I will grow up and I'll do things. Don't wait for the stage. It will be too late. Yeah, now <laughs> yeah. is the time. I, yes. Now is the time. Ageism is a, is a huge issue, actually, and mm -hmm. every voice feeling is, yes. is important. Are you enjoying your education these days in your school in Birmingham? And this question is from Alisa in Cheshire. Oh yes, I am enjoying my education. Well, there's a lot to do right now because I'm doing A-levels. It's like a sudden change from GCSE to A-levels. But the subjects I'm doing are history, economics, maths, and religious studies, and I really like them. So that's why I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Great choices, very serious choices, brilliant. Uh, how is education for girls in your country now? And that's from Asha uh, in Enfield and Northeast London. 
So um, the reality is that uh, the situation is not the same in every part of the country. So, for example, in the capital, Islamabad in Pakistan, there are girls going to school, but then there are um, there are, there are many parts in which girls cannot go to school, and about um, five to six million children at primary level are out of school in Pakistan. We, uh, in, in most of the data that we mentioned, like about the number of girls who are out of school, there's not data, enough data about the girls who are away out of the secondary education because no one really even counts them. The number you hear are just focused on primary level. Right. So that's also tragic that we don't collect the data that we need, which is how many girls drop school at secondary level and how many are out of school. But in terms of primary education, there are about like five to six million children in Pakistan. And um, it's, it's really important that we think of uh, supporting them in education. Pakistan is now, right now, at a stage of having, uh, trying to develop strong democracy and improve and fight against terrorism. And if we forget the education of our next generation, I don't think we won't be able to achieve that progress. We need to educate the future generation and then they can build a more peaceful and better Pakistan. What would you say to young people who do not like, enjoy or appreciate school? And this is from Miss Skinner. She's a teacher uh, oh. in Cardiff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should um, tell that, um, like my brothers, I tell them every day that they should focus on their studies because they spend their time on Xbox and computers. And uh, sometimes we, like, we go to school every day and it's for many, many years of our life. Uh, but in between, we forget its importance. And I know its importance because when I was 11, I was stopped from going to school. And the next day when I woke up and I just could not go to school and I could not believe it that for the rest of my life, I wouldn't be able to study at all and I wouldn't be able to become a doctor or teacher or anything I liked. And that was the state when I realized that education is really important for every child. So before you see that stage, realize it now. I don't want you to go through that situation ever. So realize that it's it's for your future it's for the future of your country in a way you are contributing to your society and just believe in yourself believe in the power of education i think it's very easy to take for granted and yes. is actually a gift uh what do your younger brothers think about your efforts and this is from artem in london well they're really annoying and <laughs> uh they fight with me all the time however they they're sometimes nice and sometimes they think I'm doing good work. Yes. Well, that's sometimes. good. Sometimes. Yes. At least sometimes. That's, that's something. <laughs> My brothers are the same, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what were your feelings when you had to speak publicly for the first time in front of presidents and prime ministers? And that's from Mariam uh, in Manchester. I think I should say I feel really scared in, in school, speaking in school. and. But in terms of meeting presidents and prime minister and then talking about a cause which really matters, mm. uh, then you have to forget about getting nervous and the way you deliver the speech. Forget all those things and say what's in your heart. Do not do not hesitate. When I was meeting the president of Nigeria to talk about the girls who were abducted by Boko Haram, I said it very clearly that what are you doing? Um, what have you done so far? Because three months had passed and the president had not even met them and then he announced that he would meet the parents so this is you say it clearly why to hesitate why to why to stop yourself uh, and like if it was meeting the president of america barack obama or anyone i say things very very clearly because it's not for me it's for it's for children and their future it's great that you see it as something which isn't it's personal obviously but it's so much bigger than that yes. and you use the power and the strength of that to really, you know, push away any nerves, which is great. How did you find the filmmaking process and what did you learn from it? Um, That's from Olivia in East Lothian. It was very long. It, um, it covered the two years journey of my life and um, like going to Jordan and to speak out for the Syrian refugee children, going to Nigeria and Kenya and giving speeches, meeting world leaders, it also tells the story of our family. So this, it was a very, it was a great experience working together with Davis Guggenheim. And well, at then I didn't know what's, what am I going to see at the end. And the way that he made it was very beautiful, especially the animation. Um, because I was wondering how is he going to tell the story of my father, my mother, and our past. And he has done it 
Very well. What do you plan to do next to further promote equality? And that's from Mavis in Middlesex. Oh, well, it's, uh, so as I said, I have this fund, the Malala Fund, and through that I'm working for education, for equality, and to ensure that girls go to school. Uh, but, um, like, how many schools can I build? I can either build nine, ten schools, and it's all through your support, through your donations that we build schools. But then we need our leaders to take action. We need everyone of us to come forward. It's not the just a few NGOs who have to do this work. It's each and every one of us who have to come forward and contribute to it, from world leaders to parents to civil society to, to everyone, even to you. Even if you are 11 or 12, don't think you can't do it. You all have to come forward and participate in it. And now it's time that we ask our governments where the money is spent. We give taxes. We expect something from our governments. And now it's time that we stand up and look where the money goes, is it spent on education? If not, why not? And why are our governments uh, not willing to help uh, children's education, especially in conflict zones right now in, uh, in Syria, where two million children are now refugees and they're out of school? And uh, it's important that, that we raise this, issue, this point, otherwise things won't change. It will just remain the same. Voices are important, speaking out and asking governments to do the right thing. Super, super, super important. Well, we've got through all of the questions that we've been uh, sent, which is brilliant. So maybe I will take this moment just to say thank you again. The film is so wonderful and your story is, is, is beyond inspiring. And thank you for your time and it's great to have you. And uh, I think it would be great if you give a message to all these children who, <laughs> who are listening to us right now because you also stand for a cause that is very important. We want equality and there would be so many boys in the audience. Yes. Yeah. Uh, boys in the audience, <laughs> <laughs> specifically. Um, I work for a cause called He For She. If you haven't signed up yet, then that would be wonderful. But we, we really need you as the next generation to extend a hand to, to the girls and the women in your life and to include them and to make sure that they can live their lives without discrimination and that they have access to the same opportunities that, that you do. And you're in a unique position. You have a unique opportunity to do that. Uh, to support the girls and the women in your life. And if you have the chance, if moments are presented to you, do speak up, do raise your voice. Uh, your support could literally change uh, a girl's life, could change, could change someone's life. And, um, and you know, it's gender equality is something that will affect your life too, as men and as boys. And uh, it's just an issue that I believe about so passionately and, and any of your, your help or support is, is greatly, greatly appreciated. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Malala. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Nice to talk to you.